Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth, and welcome back to another video, folks. I'm once again in Ark, and uh, this time around, I am planning on doing some breeding in the water biome. So, we have our little base set up, which we did in the previous episode. I'm just getting a couple of things that I need. Uh, we're going to need some oil. Uh, well, gasoline, actually, more like. Um, I realize we don't have anything to cook with over there. We're going to get a couple of pieces and stuff and kind of set up a base there. And of course, on top of our little base, we have our little breeding facility. So I thought it would be a good idea to start off our little two so breeding experiment, which also reminds me I still need to crack on with the next DLCs. I'm uh, not really looking forward to it. Of course, Aberration is the one map I'm not a big fan of. But we'll have to do that as well. So maybe I'll be looking at that in the next episode. We might as well just get that out the way. And then, of course, we've got Extinction and all of the other DLCs to get through. But Aberration is one of those that I'm not really that keen on, to be fairly honest. <sighs> but we have to do it. We have to do it. I said I'd do it. I will do it. I have to do it. I just have to get around to it. Currently speaking, I'm quite happy with what I have here. Um... Obviously, before we set off to the Aberration DLC, we're going to make sure everything is kind of okay here in terms of energy. Of, for, of course, we also have to consider food and stuff like that. And I keep forgetting things, right? Um, we want to look for some elements. We're going to need some of that. Because um, we are going to use the S Plus Mutator. And that, of course, requires element. And I'm running short on that. So I'll need to farm some more up. That's going to take a while, I guess. Uh, we do have to get the right biome in the space area. Um, yeah, we are running short on that. So while I'm doing that, I might also do some farming with regards to the element dust because we can take that with us. And of course, by taking that with us, we can then turn it into element on um, extinction. Aberration, that's the one, aberration. Jesus Christ. These two DLCs, for some odd reason... I do tend to get confused. Anyways, back to the story. We're going to get some stuff set up here at the uh, lower part of, or the like, breathing part of the water base. So over here, we want to put down a grill so we can cook some meat. We have some food in that case. And of course, I do have, as you can see right here, uh, some cryopods that I kind of forgot about and uh, that's not good you know forgetting about these things is not really recommended <laughs> especially seeing as I've got creatures over there that I don't really want to lose so we'll have to put them in the cryo fridges I think I'll put the grill right here next to the refrigerators because it's probably the best the best place to keep them if I'm honest and uh, let's put that in there that's kind of ready to go I could probably make some more gasoline later on um, yeah, we're going to need the two sores. I might use the Mosasaurs as well. So, I think that's a plan. I also have a trough with me. I'm just having to look at where I could place stuff. I think I'm going to have this area right here as the general crafting area. I might as well put a trough here because I know I have a trough in my inventory somewhere. There we go. Uh, we might end up having creatures here at some point. Although, it doesn't really make much sense to have creatures in an underwater base um, or like this little pocket of air because uh, it'll probably be uh, creatures that are um, like land-based kind of creatures. And as you can see right here, got to get rid of these. We don't really want to lose these wyverns. I don't really know why I have them. Uh, I did accidentally probably take them with me last time I came here and forgot about it. And as you can see, some time has passed. So it's a good thing I decided to log on and uh, <laughs> uh, play a little bit of art because otherwise that would have been really painful losing all these wyverns. Um, where did I store my water creatures? Nope. Uh, might be the first one. All right, so let's look for the two so and of course we also want the mosasaurs out we might as well breed them as well and uh, we've got loads of eels okay um so we got plesiosaurs mosasaurs second mosasaur right there there we go that's what we were after Uh, 
Okay, now comes the dangerous part where there's normally sharks around here, so I need to be quick and get myself into the base. And of course, I have the doors to not open automatically because, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't really want them to automatically open when I'm close to them, just because I probably will end up being close to them. And of course, we do have sharks and lots of them in this area. This guy is a male, so I do have a female in my pocket. Might as well take her out and uh, let these guys do their thing and make some babies for us. Um, we are going, well, I am going to be looking at making some mutated two souls and, uh, We'll see how far along we get with those. We also have to work on the equuses. So, um, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I think... I, I personally... Okay, I'm going to be honest here and say I personally like using the egg-laying creatures to breed just because I find it easier and quicker to breed creatures that lay eggs as opposed to mammals that give life birth. But that's just my personal preference. We will let these guys do the wild thing right here in this corner whilst we play around with some other stuff over here. Alright, let's pop these guys out. And I realized I took a manta with me, so that kind of sucks. A bit unfortunate there. And we are going to move these guys into this corner right here. And try and kind of move. I mean, these guys have a big ass turning circle, as you can see. I think that'll do. We don't really want them sticking out too much. I mean, at first you'd think that this is a big base, but you realize how how I mean it's appropriate. We've got sharks right there. So these are the sharks that followed me when I moved from the lower part of the base to the upper part of the base, which is actually the breeding facility. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, you know, initially when I was building this, I thought, oh, this is going to be a big place. But uh, turns out, you know, you're going to store big creatures like this. Really, it's not that big. Let's put out another one. Mount it up and move it out. And the turning circle on this is painful. <laughs> Okay, come on. Come on, turn around. Turn around. See, I kind of want to leave it here. But then, how much of it is sticking out? Quite a bit. I'm uh, not a big fan of that. Um, Really not a big fan of that. I might have to do something about it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do something about it. I can't really... Nah. Okay, these guys are happy here. They're doing their own little thing. Okay, we're about to get the first egg. So that's kind of good. And I just realized I haven't set up the mutator. Okay, so I'm jiggling things around because, for some odd reason, when the two souls breed... The female lays eggs inside of her hitbox, which is a bit annoying. So I'm rejigging things around because it's painful. We we need to get to the eggs somehow. Plus, I want to place the mutator uh, somewhere closer to the center of this room. So let's place some stuff in here and see if this works. Give this a test run. Although, to be fairly honest, really, I need the unmutated um, parents so I can then start breeding the mutations. But this is, uh, you know, this we're just testing stuff out for now. We're just making sure um, things work the way they're supposed to. And obviously, this is kind of going to help us perfect the base for some odd reason. Yeah, okay, so this worked. But I don't see the little radiation symbol on the creature, so I'm not sure what's going on here, if this is a visual glitch or what's going on. But it is a bit frustrating. Okay. Let's play with the range. So, set to small range. No, we don't want that. Okay. So, does that mean it's on, on the large range? Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Okay, so... A couple of things have happened. As you can see, we have a couple of eggs here, but... 
the eggs are hatched inside the mama too so and uh, that is not good for us because we can't get to them to shift them about so we're gonna have the little baby uh squids in this corner until i figure out what i want um to keep basically i think yeah we, we we need the ones that have the best combined stats to be fairly honest and uh, once we have uh, a pair of them we can then work with that but right here these are the eggs i'm pretty sure there should be more than that but uh yeah yeah we have some eggs here this is what they look like they look like giant floating eyes but uh yeah so I've had to cryopod the mama because, of course, <laughs> we are having problems with the eggs and the way they pop out. I might set up a, um, whatchamacallit, a S plus hatchery. Okay, we've got a little baby here. Oh, we can pick up the eggs. I did not know that. Okay. Well, then that means we can move the eggs. That's fine. This one is the mutated one because this is from the S plus mutator. So we'll shift this one here. We might keep this one regardless of what we get as a little Tuso to play with and experiment with and stuff like that. Um, it's coming. It's coming. So I think one of the things I might need to do, of course, is to shorten their follow range. They do seem to have a quite a long one, actually. And as you can see, we have a nice color on it as well. Mm, nice. Okay, so I have moved the eggs, and there was actually more eggs than I expected. So these are all the eggs we have from the Tussos. Check this out. So the aim of the game now is to get the first breeding pair that we will then breed mutations off of. Of course, I'm going to have to wait for these things to hatch. But it looks pretty cool. I like it. I really do like it. So we have quite a few of them. That's nice. Mmm. Squid. Calamari. Mmm. Just imagine all that calamari that you could eat. <laughs> okay, it's been a while, so I have settled on two Tussos that I've got. Um, of course, I still need to get the initial breeding pair, so that's something to work on, but... I was getting bored, so I thought I might as well take this one that is mutated out and uh, go for a spin. Really? And, uh, okay. And, and one thing that is funny, I didn't show it, but when you do kill the babies with the S plus... Ooh, no, we don't want that. Uh, with the S plus um, euthanasia gun, after you kill them, they still do the ink thing, which is kind of annoying, because you have to wait for the ink to go away. Okay. We're getting loads of bad stuff coming towards us. Uh, this is a very dangerous location, full of bad things. <laughs> just, it's just amazing how many sharks and bad things there are underwater. To be honest, um, definitely not a friendly place to be. And uh, there are a couple of changes, obviously, to the water biome, which is somewhat frustrating because the two so that was once kind of immune to the stinging creatures, so your Electroforce and the uh, Nidarias, or so in other words, the squids, uh, no not the squids, the um, jellyfish and the eels, now seems to have a bit of a problem with them in the sense of they tend to get inside the squid's hitbox and uh, they kind of tend to get you stuck, which is not good. Plus they do seem to stun the squid, which is again not really a good thing, is it? <laughs> they didn't really have to have that problem. Or, no, they didn't have that problem in the past, is what I meant to say. My English. Oh, we don't want to get stung by you. That really hurts. We're going to have to shift. So this is me getting stung right now, which is awful. All right, let's move this way. There we go. We do get biotoxin, but those, of course, um, have a spoil timer. Oh, we got an Alpha Megalodon, so let's let's deal with this guy right here because he will give us quite a bit of XP. So we can do some leveling up on this. I mean, this is just a um, test subject. In the long run, this squid that we are playing with, we will not keep, but we are just playing around with it 
This just gives us something to... Oh, no. That's not good. We got the eels coming. And this is what I'm afraid of. You can, as you can see right here, I am getting stuck, which is not good. We do not want to get surrounded. Um, that is really painful, really bad. And, of course, if the squid dies, I'm probably going to follow suit very quickly. So we want to get rid of all this bad stuff. Go, 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 go. Uh, we are getting filled up with meat as well, which is not really something that I'm looking forward to. Uh, we're going to have to dump a lot of this rubbish. Um, I don't want to disable harvesting because we are going to need some of that meat. Especially when it comes to feeding the little babies that we are going to have. Huh, interesting. So the Basilosaurus has dropped its mantas, which we ended up kind of killing off. So I guess that would be a good time to tame a Basilosaurus. We just keep getting these sharks. That's really frustrating. And the other thing is, oh, I hate when it does that. I really hate when you do that spin. So basically what I'm trying to do here is, obviously the squid does like to swim backwards and then normally there used to be a thing where you turn your camera frontwards towards the mouth of the squid, towards the tentacles of the squid. Oh for God's sakes, we have more of that jellyfish stuff coming through. Uh, so yeah, they used to work. As you can see, it did a couple of times, then it turns into another direction, then it turns again. Uh, it's just frustrating. I never used to do that, so I don't know if this is intended or not. But this is one of the downsides of the squid itself, which makes it difficult to use, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose it's nice. Taming one of these things can be a dangerous feat in itself, especially in Genesis 2. As you can see, the water biome is full of really bad stuff and lots of it. And uh, I am almost certain. Oh, nope, 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 nope. We have loads of these mantas we need to reposition. Again, mantas are a bit of a nightmare simply because they like to get stuck in the Tussauds hitbox. Not get stuck, but they like to invade the Tussauds um, hitbox, which can get the Tussauds stuck. Oh my god, this Megadon. Again, more of that jellyfish. Where's it? <laughs> Where's it coming from? How do how how am I aggroing so much jellyfish? Uh, please do not sting me. Okay, we got them, and now we have the dolphins coming. This is brilliant. This is just brilliant. This is a nightmare in the water. Not a big fan of it. See another one uh, creature that, or another type of creature that can get you stuck, is a stupid dolphin. No. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to kill the dolphins. I know they're nice and friendly, but they're a pain in the backside. There we go. I'm still being attacked by stuff. Now, of course, I could run off, or swim off, better said, but uh, we do also want to level up our two so so that is one of the purposes of taking this guy out for a spin. Ooh, 52 levels, so... We have plenty of meat, not that I'm going to need it. We are almost over encumbered with the amount of meat that we have. We also have loads of rubbish that we do not need, so I'm going to get rid of that stuff. And of course, we also need to use up some of these levels, so I think I'm going to try and get the two so to maybe 40 or 50,000 HP, and then obviously try and put in as much damage on it as possible now this kind of will give me an idea of what it can achieve with um a full mutation stack in damage um at a base level before we level it up before we imprint on it and all that sort of stuff of course well once we've done all that um i think the damage coming out of the two so will be mad so that's why i want to do it And that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to make my way back to base. We are really hurt. Of course, we have also leveled up a lot in health. And uh, as you can see, we've got some plesiosaurs that want to take a little nibber, nibble. Oh, my English is broken. I guess they do like cow. Oh, we can. Uh, there's another squid right there. Let's get rid of this right here. A shark. Sharks, actually, better said. So let's get rid of these guys. 
or at least the vast majority of them. As you can see, the damage has increased, which is nice. And we want to kind of shift this way. Oh, the squid is coming towards us. Let's see how quickly we can dispatch of this squid. But uh, yeah, I think this will be the end of it because I am heading back to base. Yeah, that was quick. We have gained another level. We're going to use that up. But that is pretty much it for this episode. This was kind of fun, dangerous, and nerve-wracking at the same time. Uh, join me in the next episode where I think I'm going to be looking at moving on to the Aberration DLC. Where we're going to start working our way towards the Rockwell boss and complete the Rockwell boss again. I will probably be taking the Shadow Mains with me. We'll give those guys a go and see what can happen with that. If we can defeat the Alpha Rockwell boss with the Shadow Mains, hopefully that would be quite nice. And maybe, who knows, I might come back with some Reapers and some Rock Drakes. I don't think I have any Rock Drakes and some other stuff from the DLC when I do finish with it. At least that is the plan. You know, I do want to kind of come back to Gen 2 with some creatures from each DLC, if at all possible. I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe, folks.